It's quite the night in Bramlage Coliseum, but in the end, the Cats come away with a big win over a pretty good basketball team. K-State women dominated Creighton from the jump, blew them out, was never really close. Sayoka Lee was great. A lot of other pieces that stepped up. They knocked down shots. Looked really good tonight. Unfortunately, most of you are here to hear about uh, a pretty nasty game that involved K-State basketball because they got beaten in a pretty bad way against LSU tonight. 76-65. to The final score doesn't fully reflect how nasty of a game that it was for K-State because Wildcats did not shoot the ball well in this game. They looked bad defensively. You could say lazy. You could say just not locked in. And there were a lot of other problems that came up throughout this game. But the Cats end up losing by 11. And there's one particular stretch that I want to point out immediately to start this game. Jerome Tang took all of it on him for the loss afterwards and talked about, I mean, he was clearly upset. And we've seen over the last, last season, now into this year, he's a little bit more open about the bad games. What that tells me, because we didn't see that a lot in, in the Elite Eight season, year number one. The, really, the only game we got that was at Oklahoma on Valentine's Day when, I mean, it took them like an hour to come do post-game media. OU went first when traditionally the road team goes first. Like, there was a lot there. It, clearly, he was frustrated in that moment. But we've now seen multiple times over in the last 12 months Jerome Tang handle things much differently. He did that tonight. But one area of this game where I do think it does fall on Jerome Tang is when you compare what the head coaches in tonight's game did. Jerome Tang didn't use his first timeout until K-State, who was trailing by three, now trailed by 12, with about four and a half minutes left in the first half. He let that lead balloon into a double-digit lead as he tried, I think, to see if his team could handle it, get some things figured out. It was obvious that they couldn't. Compare that to what Matt McMahon did in the second half when K-State down 14, goes on a quick little spurt, they cut it down to 10. Matt McMahon wastes no time in burning a timeout to kind of just chop the head of the snake off right there. And to me, that is one of the differences in this game tonight where that felt like K-State's best chance to come out on the other end and maybe make some noise in the second half. They just could never get it any closer uh, than I think they got it maybe down to nine at one point in the second half. But bad game all around. Doug McDaniel was a bright spot. He came out, scored early. His quickness, obviously, still a really big deal for K-State, but not a lot of other things to like in this game. And the biggest concern probably is Coleman Hawkins. Yeah, there was a lot from this game. And we talked in, our, in the preview about how both teams, you know, we didn't really know what to expect. But, but that's just with quality of competition. You, you just don't know. Alabama State was up 12 with I believe it was like 15 minutes to go the last time that LSU played in, in Alabama State, not a good basketball team. Uh, uh, tonight was a totally different LSU team and a totally different K State team, and I, and I think that it, it does start with Coleman Hawkins. I, you you can't have the NIL figure that's out there and have three, two okay games and a one really bad game. <laughs> in this day and age uh, because you know that he's going to hear it from not just K-State fans, not just Illinois fans, but kind of from everyone that this was not a very good game for him and it was just everything looked kind of off with him. His lack of athleticism and burst was really on display tonight. I, I think that he was really lost defensively, but he wasn't the only one. And, and I think that that is the, the biggest problem, but that probably the number two biggest problem is that that is what you would think is probably one of your best players, probably your second best player, maybe your best player on certain nights that didn't really look all that engaged and all that interested in playing a basketball game tonight. And if you really look down the entire roster for K-State, only two guys really looked pretty interested in playing a basketball game. It was Doug McDaniel and David Gasson. And I think that that is where a lot of the grossness comes in because there were multiple, multiple occasions where K-State would miss a shot and just not go back on defense or a shot would go up and nobody for K-State would even attempt to box somebody out. I, I mean, I pointed it out with like five minutes to go. 
that uh, somebody for LSU just took a very rushed three in a possession yeah. with like 25 seconds on the shot clock. They were winning by 12 or 14 at that point. I was like, why is he even shooting that? And then it didn't matter because he got his own rebound because nobody on K-State looked like they even wanted to get the ball. Yeah, there's just so many things right now on the defensive end of the floor where K-State doesn't look like they have the basketball smarts to make the right play. And this is where it gets concerning because this is something that I talked about early on last season, and it never really improved. Because at this stage of your life, yeah, you can get a little bit better in some areas. You can have some growth. But if you don't understand the game of basketball to a certain level at this point, like your basketball IQ isn't there, it's not magically going to get better if you don't have it by the time you're 18, 19, 20 years old. And most of these guys are at least 20 years old on this team. So... And that's where you look at what K-State had in year one under Jerome Tang. And you go, Marquise Noel obviously had it. Keontae Johnson obviously had it. Desi Sills, I questioned it at times, but he made up for it, more than made up for it, with how aggressive he was, how much hustle he had, and the fact that, I mean, he was – he made the right plays out there when you needed him to. Now, you know, I, again, I question his, his shot selection sometimes, but uh, shout out to him for what he did against KU in year one. Um, but that's, that's one of those areas, too, where I just – they didn't look engaged. And then there were so many times where K-State – think in trying to force a turnover, they ended up getting into a situation where they would maybe switch, and then they tried to set up a little bit of a double. But nobody on this team right now is playing well enough on defensively to be able to handle that where they can't make up for it because they just look slow on defense. And part of that is just being lost, I think, mentally, like I've talked about, but also just guys not getting in a good position. Coleman Hawkins was one, again, to point out that he had a couple times where he left his feet and it it cost K-State, and uh, you just can't have that. And then you talk about Doug McDaniel, David Gasson looking like really the only two guys that from start to finish acted like they cared out there tonight and brought it the most – you know, engage we saw Coleman Hawkins in this game was in the final minute when, look, they end up calling the foul on Cam Carter. I I don't know why they did because it, if you look at the video, for no reason Hawkins makes kind of a beeline in in that situation is running and closing out really hard in a situation that doesn't make a ton of sense. He and Cam Carter collide. They share some words after the game. There's jawing back and forth and everything. Um, It, Just a weird night and not something to give good vibes early in the season where you already have a bad loss, but it's made even worse by the fact that a lot of things in this game, we've already said it, but they felt gross. Yeah, and that that is the most concerning thing about this game, I think, is that there are bits and pieces where I'm like, okay, like shots aren't always going to fall. K-State wasn't making threes at a very high clip really at all tonight. I think they only made one in the entire second half, and when you're trailing, you <laughs> you would like to make those. And, and K-State was only 50% in the paint tonight. I, I don't think that that will happen again. It, it'll probably be not this bad, but it will never probably be in that like 70% range. But you, you would like it to be better tonight. K-State was 13 of 26 in the paint. That's that's not a good thing. But but the thing that I just keep going back to, and, and it's what me, you, D.Y., and KSU underscore fan have been talking about really really since the game got out of hand with about 10 minutes left in the second half was just that you can't have a game like this when the entire nation is watching you because they know that you have one of the most expensive rosters in college basketball because that number just keeps getting floated out there and everybody keeps talking about it. You can't come out and look like you want to be anywhere else but on a basketball court when you're playing one of two teams in the non-conference that are probably capable of beating you, maybe McNeese if you can get to the championship game in the in the tournament in the Cayman Island or in the Islands, but that that's the only other team that's probably capable of beating you. And, and this team was capable and kind of beat the crap out of you tonight. Yeah, and I, I mean LSU won the game. I don't think LSU is going to end up being a very good team this year. I mean they're they are one of the bottom Power Five teams uh, that that you could encounter. Um, so that's not great for K-State. You talk about the offense. Yes, shots are not going to fall. But I look at what happened tonight, and it didn't seem like K-State was able to get a ton of great looks from three even. And that's concerning, too, that we talk so much in the offseason about the amount of guys that K-State added that should be better shooters. You would think, okay, more shooters. 
teams are going to have to kind of divide and conquer here. They're going to have to kind of cut their losses, and sometimes guys are going to be open. There was none of that tonight. So the offense, I think, has to get a lot better because it was fine against New Orleans and Cleveland State, but that's not going to cut it when you play, obviously, a team like LSU, which a team like LSU, you're not going to find anybody worse than that in the Big 12 this year except for maybe Oklahoma State. So – that's where I would start to have some more concerns, and they're going to have to really do a lot to kind of regain everybody's interest and trust. And you're right. You have this highly talked about roster that has a lot of guys that command attention nationally, even if NIL wasn't involved. Coleman Hawkins and Doug McDaniel are two guys that nationally people are interested in because they know about what they did at Michigan and Illinois, and they're entertaining players when they're on and having good nights. But – People are going to want to see what happens there. And then there's also, I mean, Jerome Tang took accountability for himself after the game. But, like, Jerome Tang can't enjoy this feeling tonight even more than a normal coach would after a loss because he has to think about, okay, there was the flirtation with the Arkansas job in the offseason that required K-State ponying up more money and more guarantees. And then you build this roster that requires – reported large amounts of NIL, and this is what you end up getting on a night like this. An LSU team that K-State should have been able to handle at home. Uh, a good basketball team, an NCAA tournament basketball team, handles a team like LSU at home. The good news for everybody, if you again, you want to go the, the glass half full thing, I know I'm not very good at that. Here's what you say about tonight. It is not even in the midway point of November. There's a lot of basketball to be played. One game is not going to keep you out of the NCAA tournament. And you can get better from here. This is a brand new roster. Guys still trying to figure things out together. And I think a lot of these guys will work to try and get better and make it work. And you have enough guys depth-wise, I still think, that if one or two aren't going to jump on the wagon, then you can leave them in the dust and playing time can evaporate and you can still have a chance to be a good team tonight. The other thing I would say is, and we talked about this going into it, Cam Carter has been a very volatile player in his career. And you can typically tell early what kind of night it's going to be for Cam Carter. And depending on what night it is for Cam Carter, we saw it for two seasons at K-State, it dictated the outcomes of games for K-State. I think last year really the only game where you felt like Cam Carter was on and, and really playing well that they lost was the Oklahoma State game in Stillwater. But outside of that, you think about everything else, it's like, Cam gets a couple shots falling early. You can just tell by the way the game is flowing. That happened tonight. Now, part of that, again, K-State's defense needed to be better in some spots. But Cam Carter had a good night, and he deserves to eat it up. He deserves everything that he, he did before, during, and after tonight's game because he played well, and he led LSU to a pretty massive road win back in a place that he spent two years at. Uh, uh, my glass half full take, I think. And, and Is that football plays on Saturday? Well, I mean, football does play on Saturday. But my glass half full take would be that not quite this early – but still in November, the first team of Jerome Tang that went to the Elite Eight went to Butler against a not very good Butler team and got their ass kicked. And it was worse than this. So it can turn around because it is just November, but it feels gross because of how the game really played out. And again, kind of like this season, the 2022-2023 schedule in the non-conference was pretty bad. And Butler was one of the only power conference teams that K-State played and got rain out of the gym at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So I think that that would probably be the only other, like, silver lining that I can think of besides it being just early in the season. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. There are things to not like about how K-State has started this year, and the rebounding continues to be a very concerning problem, especially with the amount of length that you think that K-State could throw out on the floor. So K-State now has a handful of days to – try and get back up off the mat after this one. They should be able to do it because they are going to play the worst team in college basketball, and that is not an overstatement. Yep. might be an understatement. The team that lost by 72 points tonight. Yeah, to Missouri, who's not a great basketball team. They are, I was going to say the SEC version of LSU, they're both in the same conference. They are the same team. They're not going to be anything special, I would imagine, uh, this year in basketball. But, yeah, they Mississippi Valley State coming up for K-State next week and K-State should be able to handle that one, you would think, uh, pretty easily. That's one where K-State, we talk about advanced metrics, 
got to put it on Mississippi Valley State and teams like that, especially now that you got to make up for this bad home loss because this is going to be a quad three loss for K-State. Yeah, that's on a, on Tuesday night, the night before my birthday, by the way. HBD. Uh, you gotta you gotta pour that one on. That's gotta be not quite even like Missouri level, but win that game by like thirty plus. And I think that K State's in a lot better position than the vibes are better. The vibes are really gross right now, to be completely honest with you. I, that that I think was far and away the worst loss of the drum dang era. It feels like it. I mean, even Nebraska last year, it it wasn't fun afterwards. And but, you know, Nebraska was an NCAA tournament team a season ago. They kind of got hot at points throughout that game, made shots. That's the other thing, though. K State's defense the last couple of years has looked a little suspect with what they've done defensively and giving open looks. I've talked about that quite a bit. And I would point this out after the game. Jerome Tang was kind of asked about this. Was talking about. You know, at Baylor, they were like in the 270s in rebounding when they won the national championship. And so Jerome Tang kind of went on, you know, can we make up for that with offense and, you know, turnovers and all that stuff. What he failed to mention there was that that was still when Baylor was pretty high at their peak of playing good defense in college basketball. And you look at what has happened to Baylor ever since that national title. They've gotten further and further away from where they've, they've been in the defensive metrics. That's the concerning part for me, and I think there was a lot of stuff tonight based on how Jerome Tank spoke and handled things where he is not feeling very good about this basketball team right now, um, and that's, that's a little concerning moving forward. But When you have to coach effort and it's the third game of the season, that's never a great sign. Yeah, the guys should have been motivated tonight. They weren't, uh, and it feels like this is something we continue to talk about. Is that a problem with the portal, NIL, who knows what, um, but K-State's got to get that figured out in all seriousness. Shout out to the K-State women for, again, start to finish, just dominating a very good Creighton team. They are now 3-0 to start their season, and they've done it against all three teams that have very good chances to make the NCAA tournament this year, and they've really been pretty drama-free. Aoka Lee was great tonight, um, so she's getting closer and closer to breaking the single or the, the player scoring record at K-State. And then you look everywhere else, and – a lot of contributors for the K-State women tonight. Yeah, for how, how good the K-State women were last year, I think that they are even better this year. I think that they probably beat the last year's team by double digits probably with how, with how they're playing to start the season. Yeah, they. I mean, they. you think about the holes that they had last year. It feels like, I mean, again, it's only three games. We haven't seen them against Big 12 competition, but they've elevated their depth to a level uh, that's greater than last year. So they, they deserve all the praise tonight and certainly uh, – deserve some love as they take care of their business. The K-State men do not. They lose to LSU tonight, 76-65, to the final score at Bramlage Coliseum. So that will do it for us tonight here from Bramlage. We'll be back again in Manhattan on Saturday for K-State Arizona State football, 6 o'clock kick there. D.Y. and I, tomorrow morning, will have your preview of the Cats and Sun Devils right here on the KSO YouTube page as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.